Hi everyone, I'm Sam. Uh, I'm better known as SJ26 on the internet though, uh, on GitHub or Twitter or anywhere like that. Uh, I work at BuildKite. We're a CI and CD platform. Uh, so I'm an engineer and I kind of expanded sideways into site reliability because uh, I found operations problems interesting. Uh, BuildKite is a majestic monolith uh, and it's built with Ruby on Rails. Uh, we have a core Rails application with a dashboard, couple of APIs, background workers. Uh, it has dependencies on Ruby libraries or gems. We have an old JavaScript front end layer built with the Rails asset pipeline. Uh, and this needs to be compiled separately before being deployed. Uh, we have a new JavaScript front end built in React. Uh, it has JavaScript module dependencies and they're installed with Yarn. Uh, and then they need to be compiled and built with our code by Webpack. Uh, and in addition, we need a bunch of Linux system dependencies uh, installed using Debian packages. And all of this goes together to create a monolithic Docker image. So here's a really naive Docker file. Uh, it adds a whole file system up front, creates a bunch of layers, but it's simple and it gives us a working environment. Uh, now I've made this into a pipeline. But if I touch anything in the file system, it rebuilds the whole thing. Because we're adding all of the stuff in the first step. Everyone probably knows this, I'm just covering some basics. So we carefully only add the bits of the file system as they are needed to take advantage of the layer cache so a small change doesn't completely invalidate everything. Uh, but this still isn't ideal. If I change some small file up here, then the whole compile happens again and this one's pretty slow, so that's pretty upsetting. So we add multi-stage builds to isolate the dependencies. This means some steps can be cache invalidated without affecting unrelated steps. Everyone's still following? Yep. Uh, so we've changed this pipeline uh, into a dependency graph, which is kind of cool. And look, there are things in parallel here, but Docker is still building them in sequence, one after the other. Uh, and from a cold cache for our build at this time when it was implemented, uh, this takes 11 minutes and nine seconds, which is a bit long. Enter Docker build kit. Uh, or I guess it's not really Docker build kit, it's Moby build kit, but I can't keep track of that. Uh, anyway, it's a project to re-implement the Docker builder, but using abstract representations that are lower level than Docker files uh, to make creating new tools and improving the existing builder easier. Docker files become one front end, and there can be many others, including new versions of the Docker file syntax itself. So normally we run a Docker build with a Docker build command, uh, and the, it builds the Docker file into an image for us. Nothing about this has changed, but BuildKit is now shipped inside Docker, and I understand it's actually been recently upgraded as well in 1903. Uh, it's just not turned on by default. You can turn on Docker for any, uh, the BuildKit for any Docker build by adding some env. Uh, and it looks a bit like this. So it's a little bit prettier, it includes progress information, hides a bit of the verbose output unless there's errors, that sort of thing. Uh, right now, they're aiming for compatibility with existing Docker Builder. So uh, eventually, though, this will become the default way to build Docker files. Uh, now we're building BuildKite on BuildKite with BuildKit. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist that. Um, so we've got this dependency graph, but because BuildKit is really clever, it'll do this in parallel wherever it can. So it still starts with the system packages, but then it can install the gems and the node modules at the same time. And once the module's done, it'll compile regardless of what the gems are doing. Uh, and then the old JS will kick off as soon as the Rails stuff is done. Uh, and at the end, it'll merge it all together once all those steps is finished. So for us, this sped us up to seven minutes and 41 seconds. So that's three and a half minutes saved. And that's not too shabby when that's happening for every single test and deploy for every developer. And I promised this was on BuildKite. So here, I'm not making up numbers. These were actual builds with actual timings and BuildKit was faster. Uh, but we can do better. So let's zoom in on those gems for a minute. Typically changing gems means that we're like bumping a version, adding a new gem, removing something that exists. The rest of the gems are all staying put. But if we change anything in here, the whole layer cache is thrown away and built again. Not only that, but subsequent caches are also invalidated. So we can do better again. Uh, BuildKit has introduced uh, cache mounts. So you have to tell it to use this uh, experimental Docker file syntax, and then you can add a, run, a mount to any run command. Uh, the volume contents will persist across builds, including when the layer cache is invalidated. So this means we start from the previously installed dependencies and only have to work on the changes. So when the bundler cache is invalidated, it still has to rebuild each step, 
uh, but it has a warm cache that does most of the work for us. So for example, here's that uh, build from earlier where I turned build kit on. Bumping a single gem and rebuilding with a warm layer cache but without any cache mounts takes about the same amount of time. There's a few seconds difference from run to run. If instead I add some cache mounts and do that initial build again, it's a little bit more time, uh, still not within error. Um, but now doing the same gem bump again is over a minute faster than it was before. And this may seem small, but these sorts of improvements really stack up, especially over the course of a whole test suite, where over half of the time is spent on a Docker build. There's a lot more to this. I hope you've learned a little something about BuildKit and why I'm a bit excited about it, but please do some reading. Give it a go on your own Docker builds.